Hey there, and welcome back. Today, we're going to talk about how you can sync your payload CMS backend to your Next.js website frontend. Now, the question is, why do we even need to sync? So for example, if we take a look at WordPress, if you just do a few changes, um, everything appears on your website more or less immediately. So the difference here is that payload is actually a headless CMS. So payload in and of itself doesn't generate the actual page. You have to do this in Next.js. Now the data comes from payload and you can fetch it through either a REST API or a GraphQL API. But the point is that backend and frontend are separate. Now this has a bunch of benefits, but one of them is for example, that you can actually use your data that you have in your backend not only for your website, but also for, I don't know, your mobile app. You could even stream it to your custom IoT device. Whatever can basically use a REST API can be integrated with payload. Now, you can actually put your backend and your frontend into one repository. However, they are still separate, so they need to communicate with each other. Now, there are three strategies that you can choose between. Um, if you have a website and have content that is hosted on payload. So either you can do server-side rendering, which means that every time that you have a request to your website, it actually gets regenerated. Okay, so the request comes in, the server generates uh, the new HTML, sends it back, um, and your client receives the website. The second option is to use incremental static regeneration. That basically means um, you have a page that is generated at build time. Okay, so you generate the HTML and the rest of it at build time, and it's basically cached on a server. However, every time that someone sends a request, um, basically the page is regenerated in the backend. Now the original request that comes in still gets the cached page. That's a different to, difference to server-side rendering where um, each request gets a new page. This request still gets the old page, but it basically at the same time tells the server to re-render that page um, and generate a new one. You can also set it to, you know, for example, I don't know, 10 seconds, two minutes, two hours. So that way it will only generate it at most every two hours. This can be pretty handy if you have um, information that updates frequently, but it's not important that this is more or less real time. So there can be, I don't know, delays of a few minutes, for example, or an hour. And the third option is to use static site generation. Now, this is very similar to incremental static regeneration, but you basically don't regenerate it, okay? So it's basically the, the page is only generated once at build time, and it has to be manually refreshed um, to actually recompile, re-render, and generate the new HTML. Throughout your project, it probably makes sense to use more than just one strategy. In case of server-side rendering, we actually don't need to do anything to keep backend and frontend in sync with each other because it will basically happen, it will happen automatically. A similar thing happens with incremental uh, static regeneration because this basically updates itself. The only part where we actually have to actively take care of is static site generation where the page is only built once at build time. And we're going to talk about this strategy uh, in today's video. There are two types of refresh. There is a page specific refresh where you only refresh a very specific page. For example, the first article in your blog articles. This can be done through creating a custom Next.js endpoint, which is what we're going to do in this video. The second option is to do a full redeploy and rebuild, which makes sure that your entire, yeah, not the, not the entire page, basically your entire site, so all pages are completely rebuilt. This can be done through Vercel deploy hooks, and that's what I'm going to show you in the next video, where we are going to deploy our project and then also add our redeploy hooks. 
depending on the scenario that you're facing, it makes sense to use a different strategy here um, and to choose between only refreshing a single page or actually rebuilding the entire project. Now, the disadvantage of just rebuilding everything is that it usually takes up to one minute. Um, it can also be much longer. It can take, I don't know, five minutes, 10 minutes, depending on the size of your page. So the more pages you have, the longer it takes to obviously uh, refresh everything. And it also, it consumes a lot more resources because all data has to be refetched. Mm, you know the drill. So for example, if we just take a look at one blog article and we just, the, the user updates one blog article in the backend, here it makes sense to have a single page refresh because there are no other parts of the website that maybe rely on this, uh, on this data. Now things are a little bit different if you do have a blog article that is updated, but you also have a component that shows, let's say the most recent three blog posts on your website. The issue is that you don't really know where this component lives. So you can place it on your index page, you can place, place it on the slash last block page. Um, it can be anywhere. So in this case, it makes sense to trigger a full page refresh. Now, the third option would be if you just update a normal page. In this case, obviously, it makes sense to have a single page refresh. And then there are also collections in payload that don't really have anything to do with the website. And in those cases, it obviously doesn't make sense to do any refresh at all to save resources. So let's say you update an admin user or you update whatever collection that you store data in that is not relevant for your website. In this case, don't do a refresh. To demonstrate the issue, I'm back in our code base. I've also removed the experimental code for the page templates that we talked about in previous videos and just went for the simple rendering of pages. Now, if I edit a content of, let's say, our index page, so instead of test here, I'm going to say, hi, this is a new hero and save it. We are in our development server for the front end right now. And if I just refresh the page, this will fetch the new information automatically. However, in production, that won't be the case. So let's go ahead. Instead of just running our dev server, I'm going to do npm run build. And then npm start. So now this is not our development server anymore, but this is an actual production build that is now served as a normal HTTP server. If I go back into my backend and edit this again, this is again a new hero and save it. If we refresh the page, nothing happens because this page is actually rendered at build time and cached. And I didn't specify any revalidation here. If we wanted to opt in for incremental static regeneration, in addition to returning the props in our get static props function, we would also have to specify revalidate and set it to the amount of seconds that the revalidation should occur at a maximum. So in this case, it will only occur at most every 10 seconds. Now I will have to rebuild our front end. So if we refresh, this should be our current data. And I will now go ahead and change the text back to old hero, save it. And if we refresh, we still see the old page, right? But in the background, this has now triggered a revalidation. If we refresh again, now we have the new data. So let's remove this again because we don't want to use incremental static regeneration here. And let's start by implementing an endpoint in our Next.js app to trigger the revalidation of a single page. Let's get started with our single page revalidation by creating our own Next.js revalidation endpoint. For that, I'm going to go to Pages API, and in here, 
you can remove the boilerplate endpoint. I'm going to create a file called revalidate.js. In here, I'm going to paste a code snippet, but we're going to go through it step by step, and you will also find it in the notes in the description. We're basically creating a Next.js handler here, which is very standard uh, request and response. We extract the slug from the query of the request. And we also check if the request contains a secret that we specified to more or less protect the um, communication to the front end to make sure we can only revalidate from our own backend. So this is obviously not the most secure way to implement something like this. It's just a, a fast and easy way to, to understand and to explain the concept. Now, if the, if the secret matches, we, sorry, if the secret doesn't match, we basically return a 401 saying it's an invalid token, so nothing happens. Also, if we don't have a slug specified, we also return an error saying we're missing a slug here. If those are all okay and we have this information, we are going to call rest.revalidate. This is the secret source that basically will revalidate a page with this specific slug that we um, put into the query of our request. And if it's successful, we will return uh, that it's revalidated. Otherwise, we will return an error. This is very simple and straightforward. This is basically everything we have to do um, on our front end part. The only thing left before we move on to the back end is define our front end secret in our .env.local. This can be whatever you want, uh, just a random string of numbers, characters. Obviously, the, the longer, the more secure. But it's not a, a crucial point here, so it's just for additional uh, safety. Moving on to the back end, I'm going to copy our secret here. And I will put it in our environment variables for the back end. Okay, so I'm going to say payload public. The payload public means that the environment variable is also available to the admin panel front end. This can be handy if you want to implement a button in your admin UI that basically uh, revalidates a specific page. Obviously, if you put the payload public in front, it will expose this environment variable to the, the admin panel and the browser. But like I said, since this isn't a, a crucial security part, um, it's doable and it's it's very simple to implement. Otherwise, we would have to create a custom endpoint that then can be called from the admin panel and only the custom endpoint has the secret and then calls our front end, which is a lot more complex to set up. So I'm going to say front end secret, paste in our secret here. Another thing that we need is the front end URL because the back end has to know how it can actually reach the front end to revalidate a page. So I'm going to just name this variable front end URL. I'm going to say HTTP TTP localhost 3000. Next up, I will create a utility function that helps us update the front end from within our admin panel or our hooks. So I'm going to create a new folder. I'm going to put it in the utils folder. Utils, and I'm going to call it update front end. In here, I'm going to paste our revalidate page function. This is a very simple function. It basically just checks whether we have our two environment variables set. And then it will do an Axios get request to our front end and slash API slash revalidate. So the, the way this works is in Next.js, in the pages API folder, whatever you call your file is the endpoint. So it's a file-based routing system. So hello would be slash API slash hello and revalidate is slash API slash revalidate. We also pass our secret here and our slug. And if it's successful, we are just going to console log revalidation triggered. The only thing left is to hook it up to our pages collection so that whenever we edit a page and save it, 
this function gets called and revalidates the front end. So I'm going to add hooks and I'm going to add an after change hook, which means that the function is executed after the changes have, have been written to the database, but before it sends back a response to the, uh, to, the, to the client of the request. So this is an array since we can chain together multiple hooks here. I'm going to define an arrow function which takes in an object with doc. That's what we get from payload. This contains all the information of the page that we just edited. And in this function, I'm going to call revalidate page with doc.slug, which is the slug of the page. So if we go back into our admin panel and edit a page, we can just save it. That should trigger our hook and we should get some sort of thing going on yeah, in the backend. So this basically tells us, hey, this page could not be found, which is the response it gets from the endpoint it calls. The reason for that is that we still have our old version deployed. We need to run npm run build and then npm start. So let's just go back here. This is now our local server again. And if we click on save now, yeah, we don't, we, we shouldn't get any error here, but we get revalidation triggered. So let's see if this actually works. Um, we currently have back to old hero here. I'm going to change it to this is an awesome hero. So if we click on save, this should not give us an error, but actually revalidate. Um, I've just done this once before, so that's why I get multiple console logs, but it says revalidation triggered here. So let's see. Yeah, now it just revalidated. So let's test this again. Add it to hero one, two, three, four, five. Click save. Revalidation has been triggered. And let's refresh hero one, two, three, four, five. This is it for today's video. Uh, in the next video, I'm going to show you how you can deploy the project to Vercel and also install a rebuild functionality that rebuilds the entire page if you have to. Apart from that, uh, if you do have any questions, feel free to let us know in the comments. And yeah, see you soon and take care.